on there. It's a basically how she's ordered and we have three people here with us from UPK. Um, Engineering firm. This is Eric, this is the main person. And the, there's three of them, Eric, Carr, and Brian. And the different aspects of the project, different ones that can answer the questions. So hopefully read those, read what you got there, and then I'll let them take over. You mentioned my name. My name is Eric Ward. I'm a civil engineer with many engineers. I work on the open office. The, the intent tonight is to be completely informal. Um, so, like she mentioned, um, we kind of put together a list of questions people might have. So there's a question and a written answer. They're on the table by the by the sign-in sheet. So if you don't have one, um, pass them around or whatever. But um, mainly, what we want to do is make sure that Correct, you know, the correct information does get out there. People have their questions answered, um, and hopefully that um, you know the right the right information about what the township wants is looking to do here gets out uh, to the public here. Um, long and the short of it, the first question on this on this Q and A sheet kind of says, "Why is this happening now?" Or the question would be, "Why is this happening again?" Um, the township board based on um, history with their water system and that wants to make sure that they have the ability to provide safe and reliable water to the Gwynn area in the long term. And part of that being that the system is you know, 60 to 100 years old in a lot of places, it needs replacing in a lot of places. So what they did is looked at the previous um, project plan, so to speak, um, looked at pairing it back to the basic main elements that will fix what needs fixing and when, and then here we are today. Um, is this something that's that's going to be an issue, or is this something they want to move forward with? So, um, just right now, um, I guess, thank you, Brian, for putting that up there, but um, kind of what I said right now, um, one of the questions, you know, why, why are, you know, how is this happening, why is this happening? USDA is... U.S. Department of Agriculture, Rural Development, they fund water projects, sewer projects, they've done projects all over the U.P., all over the country, and they provide home oh interest loans, um, sometimes grants for doing utility projects because in most rural communities you're not the size of the city of Milwaukee where you've got a $2 million engineering budget and you can fix things every year. A lot of times things last for a long time and then they need to be repaired. Um, unfortunately, most small communities, I live in small communities, I live in one too, that what happens is it goes for a long time and we need to fix a lot of things at one time, unfortunately, and that's where USDA comes in. Um, right now, the package that uh, Foresight Township has been offered by USDA is about 2% interest um, on uh, bonds for 40-year for 40 bonds. That's the financing package they offer. It's basically the it's the best deal going. There's other state programs, but the rates can be about the same, but the terms are lower and things like that. And um, bottom line is between DEQ and USDA, DEQ also um, reviewed the engineering on the system that was looked at for what needs to happen with the system, what should happen, what's wrong, based on what's wrong with the system. Is the system falling apart today? Absolutely not. The system's out there, it still works, but year after year, things have to be fixed, and when things have to be fixed, it can get expensive, especially a lot of times when things need to be fixed, it's usually an emergency. It costs twice as much to fix things when it's an emergency. So, looking at that in total, saying, okay, if the township had the opportunity to fix things that are going downhill, things that have been breaking constantly, that are constant maintenance issues at one time at low, you know, at, uh, at favorable financing, let's call a spade a spade with USDA, I think 2%, I wish I could get a mortgage for 2% for four years, um, if they aren't close now, but, um, but um, municipalities being able to do it is a, is a pretty good deal. And, and one of the reasons uh, being is the system leaks. It costs money to pump the water. You pump it in the pipes. Of course, people use it in their houses. 
but then a considerable amount of it actually leaks back into the ground. So you've got to pay to pump it out so it can leak back into the ground. Of course, it leaks all the time. Occasionally, you get a main break, and then, <coughs> excuse me, you got a big leak, which then needs to be fixed. Those are the things that the township board thought was important to look down the road. Township water operator looked down the road. What are we going to need to fix here in the next, you know, decade, two decades? And if we can fix it now, at today's, at today's construction prices, at the low interest rates that USDA has offered, is it something to look forward to um, and do? So, I mean, I'm going to defer to Carr here for a second. Carr's been involved with the township water system for a number of years. And he's in a project on, on uh, M35 here in town. And um, just, just to kind of go through something that was repaired and what the benefits of that were at one point in time. So I'm just going to defer to you. He says for times since 1974, uh, that but uh, interesting experiment, unintentional. When we did the M35 project, we replaced all the water main along M35. And that happened right here, uh, you know, reflected here in the bar graph we got there for 2009. And you can see how much water is not being pumped after we did the, the project on M35. We replaced the old pipe in there, the new pipe, and we reduced uh, lost water about 140,000 gallons per day just in that short stretch of Maine, which amounts to about 16% of your total water pipe that's in the system. So. Uh, that's, you know, but also, uh, we only, because we don't have meters and houses, we meter how much we pump and how much we pump for the sewage, for the sewage meter. So we know those two numbers, just the gross numbers. We don't know what individuals use. But theoretically, if none of the water was leaking out, Almost all the water we pump should end up in the sewer. And in fact, we know that sewers always have some infiltration in them, so the common thing would be would be more sewage than the water you pump. We got the reverse here by a significant number. Uh, so, this is the next slide I forgot. Oh, okay, another experiment. We, we just completed a project in Richmond Township. And, uh, that's sort of a nice little project that's all right there. Palmer's just one little. But similar pipe. Uh, we replaced all the water main. And we put in water meters, which is required by USDA. We must really don't allow you to, uh, to take the money unless you put in water meters. As you can see, we dropped from 27, 28,000. Or 20 million gallons down to 15 million gallons. That's a 45 percent decrease. All that water, is in. and they got similar conditions that you've got here. We got sandy soils. Water can leak for a long time before it ever comes up the surface. And you had a big advantage here in Gwen. You pay very little for your water because you don't do any treatment to pump it up. And your sewage, pump it out the room, and it's very low cost there. So you know, it's not real sensitive to this. It still costs money. And I guess one thing we throw out to the environmentalists is that's energy not used, there's money saved by a project like this. Yes? Sure. Is that the usage 15 million? Day, month, year? That's, that's, that's per year. 15 million gallons per year. But the significance is not the total, but, but, but the result you know, change. Right. Kind of jump forward, right? No, that's fine. That's fine. Right. I, I, and jump in with questions anytime. Right? Uh, one of us will try to handle it. Yes. Okay, does this. Uh, Consider too, like during the summer, you know, when you know, when we have restrictions on a lot of this water.
lot of the daylights out of our lawns. Uh, as far as calculations, I mean, I could see that using more water than. But that's that's correct. And this is these numbers are annual. Right. So, so All that includes it includes, it includes lawn sprinkling. It includes uh, let runs. Okay. It includes whatever because. Well, to break down, I've, I've gone through and analyzed on a, on a daily basis, and I've looked at, you've only really got two months of the year where your, your water usage should represent really what the people are using, because November and December, there's no lawn sprinkling, and the left ones haven't started. Uh, as soon as you get beyond that, you tend to keep, get left runs around, and, and prior to that, then you get lawn sprinkling. And I've seen those numbers, but I don't have them this way here. There's still a lot of water lost. If you're pumping it, you're not selling it. Okay, like in Palmer, you're saying they put the meters in and all that stuff. Yes. And I remember talking to Joe Pinelli about it. And they were saying, oh, there you go. <laughs> uh, water rates, I mean, if you're metered, and theoretically, if you didn't use it to water your grass, your water bill could actually be less, couldn't it? It could be. What we do, and we covered some of that on the handout here. The, the, it sounds like it's going to go, it doesn't say anything well, like that. It just says well, it's going to go up. Well, here's, here's the reality. Okay. No. It costs money to put in the meters. Those meters got to be paid for somehow. Oh, okay. yeah. Right. No. Uh, but the, the, the concept that, that uh, USDA promotes and believes in is that it should be fair across the board. Everybody that uses a gallon of water should pay the same, pay the same price for that gallon. Now, the first year, we don't really know. We'll, we'll make a guesstimate um, and we'll just base it on, just like we have done, I think we're going to have to raise that 37 to about $40 a month for the first year. That would be for every home. Okay. Once we've got a year of that data collected, then we can look at it and, and you break out groups of usage and try to figure out uh, basically if every customer on the system used the minimum, you still got to pay off the bonds and you got to pay to operate the system. So, so you got to, but, but there's always going to be people who use more than you know. So they've written books on how <laughs> to, to uh, rate the system. But uh, in USDA, by the way, they don't just give you the money and forget about it. They come in and check the books every year, make sure what you're doing, what you're spending money on, what you're complying with what they do. And they would look at, for example, the rate structure to be sure that it's fair and balanced in that kind of thing. Yes? Would it be correct to say that a family of six or eight would have a higher water bill than a two-person family after the meters are in because the two-person family is going to use a lot less than a seven or eight-person family. So that would be the concept of a two-person, because right now we're paying the average rate of everybody, and so you do have a possibility to have your water go down, some will have their water after the, After the first year or After the analysis is made, you know, how much it's going to cost per gallon to do, but a two-family, two-family, two-person household probably will pay less than they are right now after we do the analysis. I live in Ishmael Township, the, the base is uh, 3,500 gallons a month. Just me and my wife, we rarely use that much water. Right? In the middle of the summer, sometimes if the lawn is dry, I could But I still pay for 7,000 per well, every other month. So it's, I still pay for 3,500 gallons a month. I see. Even if I only use 2,000, because I can't go below it. If I go over, I pay it. And you did the same thing in Ishmael? With the meters, was it Ishmael? You put all yeah. the meters and stuff in? Do they replace water lines and stuff over there for that? Well, I'm in Ishmael Township. We put a lot of new water mains in at that time. Yeah, so, uh, Ishmael has, well, they've got all of their uh, wooden water mains out of service now. <laughs> they've got some pretty, they've got some old water mains in at the line. Yeah, the, the 
Does how did all of that work out as far as your rates? Well, you got to be careful when you talk about that because uh, time value of money. Okay, we did that back in the early '80s. Uh, my uh, my water was sixteen dollars every two months. But that's not in today's dollars. That's because we borrowed the money in the 1980s, yeah. we borrowed it in those kinds of dollars. And that's the thing I was just like, thinking about as we're talking here today. We're, we're talking basically a 40 year program. USDA wants to make sure two things. One, that the, the materials we're using and everything we install either it'll last 40 years or We've got a replacement program in for you, it's like a pumps or something like that that maybe we have for 10, 12 years. So that at the end of 40 years, you have the money in the bank to start over again and replace what's going on. No, you're not in that situation now, of course. Uh, but if you think about what's happened in the last 40 years to the value of a dollar compared to what it I don't know what's going on, but I don't think it's going to go down. Yes. Sir, but what year did you start this project? <laughs> I mean, this, this project has been going on since uh, Mr. DeGiuliani's the yes, supervisor, sir. prior to that. And at that time, what would you have any idea what the cost of the system to do what you're planning on doing now for I mean, we were, about four and a half million? Well, we were planning on putting water meters every place. What? And, uh, I think we were at about three hundred fifty thousand dollars to put in. And I wasn't replacing the meters; it was all water meters. So if the township would have done it back then, yeah. you can see the difference in cost. We probably had about a million dollar back in that, that period of time. Now it's already up to four million. Five years from now, it could be eight or nine million. So I'm just saying that somewhere along the line, as this system gets down, it's start falling apart. It's not right now, but it will eventually. We'll pay more down the lane. You'll you know. pay, you pay twice. You'll pay, you pay more, yep. as Eric mentioned, because you're doing it in an emergency situation, either with lower time on the people you've got employed, or hire a contractor to get in now, because we need you now. And that's you know, a little plus on that, just to be here. He knows he can get it. So, so you pay, you know, plus doing a bunch of little pieces, Two or three major breaks a year or so. Uh, and replace the source section is much more expensive than replacing one. Well, not, not just that. I mean, interest rates are going to. They're not going to stay this low forever. That's, uh, <laughs> and, and I mean. Who, who here has seen interest rates this low? I haven't. Never. No. So, I mean, I can see 10 years from now, the loan might be 5 or 6%. So some people feel like, oh, they didn't give us a grant. They didn't give us a 2% interest rate. They're giving you a solution. It just doesn't call the grant. One thing I, one thing I failed to mention, um, when I was thinking, you know, a lot of people are like, well, you had mentioned, you know, other places I've done this for public township, actually, in North Republic is replacing the bulk of the mains in North Republic. And they have to put meters, they're putting in process. They probably got about 75% of them put in. They're doing the same project, type of project. But unfortunately, I mean, I live I live in Bolton, you know, and I, I grew up in Bohawk, which is north of Bolton. And everybody in the UP is kind of in the same situation. You know, you had mining or you had Air Force bases or whatever, and all of this stuff was built in either the early 20th century or in the 50s and 60s. And, and unfortunately, everything's been good for many years, and all the chickens are coming home to roost with this stuff, because even a lot of materials, well, like cast iron, that they put in all the way back when, that cast iron will last forever. The problem is that socket that, that you put together with the old lead oakum and stuff like that, that doesn't last forever. I mean, does the rubber we use today, is that going to last forever? No, but it's going to last, it's going to last probably longer than the lead oakum did, because it's just a better joining system. We got a Decision on how stuff's put together. So, you know, you're not alone by any stretch 
do in this type of situation with the, the new, in, in most of the instances, the sewer runs down the middle of the street and the water main runs on one side or the other. We plan on putting new water main on the opposite side from where the existing one is, try to keep everybody in service, and then when we get the new main installed, at least in one area, block, a few blocks, and, and uh, disinfectant pressure tested, then cut it over and abandon the old. Well, I was wondering, are you in the lines in the end are big enough to be able to add that stuff to it later? Yeah, they, I mean, the, so you're going to have to go back and redo. Well, and that's see, that's the whole. That's one of the. That's one of the things that I know DEQ always looks at when we're doing this. Is I mean, if you're if you're installing a pipe and you don't put a valve on the end so you can tie onto it later, I mean, that's just throwing good money after bad or however you want to look at it, that's money not well spent. So, you know, looking at these areas, excuse me, you know, when when the lines are constructed, we're going to leave a T in the line, you know, for someday. I mean, that's just that's just good practice. It's getting, it's in the ground, you just drop the T in, you put a cap on it, mark where it is. When the time comes, pull the cap off the T, tie on it, and keep going. That's, you know, that's... And there's a, a lot of cases too where even even you know replacements up in the corner here or something. If something ever did go up there, well instead of putting an elbow on the corner, put a T. It's a lot easier to take the cap off the T someday and just take the whole elbow off and put a T. So there's little things like that that would be done with the project. Looking at just looking down the road if something does happen, you're not installing the infrastructure, the pipe per se, but you're certainly leaving stuff there that makes it easy to do. The other part of the answer to your question is we do a complete computer analysis of the pressures in the system under various situations, put fires at different locations, run with, uh, for example, the uh, Austin booster station running and a fire over in that area someplace and, and make sure that we've got adequate pressures every place in the system or we increase the pipe size. To the That's why this is the need of the state. So, so it looks like the Norm service station, is that where the squiggly lines start? Um, yeah. yeah. There, that's Norm, so everything further is still being done. Wow. Or you discontinue that. Well, the squiggly lines have been eliminated. That oh, that, that, well, we use the existing lines. Line. Oh, you can use the existing lines. The heavy lines here are the new lines that are in the project. These lines, like here, those are relatively, well, this is a new line we're putting on the end here. And on M35, when they rebuild M35, that's when you'll lose the water main. And up in here... So that's the line that won't be replaced. Right. Because those, all those lines out there are relatively new, well, 40 or 50 we, years we'll old. We'll put a priority on them, I guess. Uh, but they'll sense. have meters put out there. And yes, all, even in Princeton, they'll have meters. Okay. The whole system, like me, Princeton, Austin, all of Gwynn, Swansea, the Gwynn system. The Gwynn system. I think that was one, one question I think somebody had brought up in just in conversation was, and that's why the questions questions and answers were put on that sheet. I live in K.I. Sawyer. They have a water system. Well, long and short of it, this has nothing to do with K.I. Sawyer. You know, this is the Gwynn water system. That's a completely separate water system. Little Lake. Got nothing to do with you. It's, it's it's winds water system, but you know, being the township is the governing body. It's, it's a Is this, this is the uh, that's new swans here. Okay. 
So I have a question. The, uh, in that area, adequate, good, or well, are they going to be replaced? Or? They're not going to be replaced for this project. Okay. They are adequate size-wise. They are asbestos cement pipe. So what that means is it doesn't rust, it doesn't deteriorate. It's, it's, as long as you don't get in and bump it, you're okay. Yeah. But it is fragile in terms of that. So uh, originally, my recommendation was to replace that, but uh, it just didn't fit into the finance. Okay, with that, okay, you're not replacing the mains like on Sand Street and stuff. Correct. But are you going to go to each house and you're going to put a meter in? Might we, and I notice in here it talks about it, you might have to have the pipe replaced between the house and the main still, even under this project? Right. We would, yes, in that area well, as well. Uh, what we will do is, is do a pressure test on the existing service lines. If they fail a test, then they have to be repaired. So, theoretically, would that, be, would, that be, would that be an additional expense then for the homeowner? It has to be okay. Yeah, it's potentially an expense. I mean, if, if the leak turns out that it's on the township side, well, it's the township's going to have to just, you know, the township side and shut off sort of thing. So from the main to your home? No, from the main to the property line. Okay. It's the township's line. The property line to your home. Because there's a shut off under the yes. ground someplace. The shut off, you right. shut off is near your property line. Okay. And so you might have to replace the pipe from your house to that. Correct. But that's. I mean, New Swansea, where we live, I mean, the water system's not that old. Like and I believe almost all of those, if not all of them, are copper pipe, I and mean, there should not be a problem. Yeah. Typically, if it's a galvanized one, it would be better rather than the problem. And those would probably be, in, although we've gone through and tried to analyze them. Yeah. Yeah. A lot of them in years ago. Yeah. 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 Ye
adjacent to it is not eligible, but the township is going to pay for that out of the road fund so that the whole street is paid. That's, that's the plan. Actually, so one half. They got both. Uh, they'll do both halves. But, but one half is going to be paid for the project. The yeah. township will take care of it. Yes. Road development always requires, um, they, they require, they, they always use the word modest. And if you put a water main on one side of the street, you tell them you want to take the whole street, they tell you that's not modest. And because they generally don't, this program, being the interest rates are so low, they don't pay for road paving projects. Um, so that's where the township did step in. Yeah. One of the things that most of the time, if you, you replace a road in Fort Sump Township, taxpayers pay 100% of that road. Now, with the water project, the water users are actually paying for half of that road, where it doesn't come, the other half comes out of general operating, but that one half of road, because of the water system, the water users are paying for that road. If you didn't do the project and you replace it, it comes from the taxpayers from the whole township, which would be Foresight, Sands, the Lake, and that Sandy. So the water users are actually being, my favorite, being penalized a little bit because we have to pay for that road for that half. Where normally it's spread across all the taxpayers. But they do live on that road. That's true, they live on that road, but they, they, when you look at when you do replace a road, it's paid by the general operating through the whole thing. But uh, it's just part of one of the things that you have to do. You can't put a water system in and run up both sides of the roads. That's included in the price of this project. Yes. 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 Uh, but uh, the boring and jacking site now is, is prices come down, come down. And actually, if you have a, you got a stretch here in, in Gwynn where you've got a new water service to cut in every 50 feet, boring and jacking doesn't make any sense at all. But you've got Three, four, or five hundred feet with no customers on it, we can bore and jack that as cheap as you can open cut it. And there's no pay in the place we do that. Okay, we don't have to pay the cost. So we're trying to use that wherever we can in the system. If you cross somebody's driveway, for example, they, they paved it right off to the road. If you come across and you put your new line and cut their driveway out, or is the project going to replace their drive? Replace the project? in kind. So you will be able to replace concrete. We've got to put concrete back. Okay. It's asphalt. We put asphalt back. It's ground. We put ground. And pavers for pavers. Right. Okay. When you're putting in a new street, are you putting curbs on that street? No. Or are they going to put sidewalks in? No. No. Or any of no. that? That's, it's no. good. It's not, like an M -dot. <laughs> it's not like an MDOT project where they got the little bumps on the side of the road and everything else. Road development doesn't have those. Again, they look at a modest, they look at replacing what was there, and if you had a cracked up sidewalk, you might end up with a new one, but they don't make you do, they don't make you throw in handicap ramps and add, start adding curbing and things like that. The, the, the idea is to replace what was there, and, and to get you back to whole or just a little bit better. You're going to look at the drainage system. Like I live on Pierce Street, and I have a lake in my yard. Well, it's it's you know, and that's that's a that's a loaded question, and I I, I could get hung with this one, but but in a, in a lot of cases, I mean, if there's if there's a drainage problem and the road is dug up, whole is very you know, <coughs> you know, that's something you try to fix as you know as much as you can within reason. See, you know, the, the, the streets are all county road commission problem. Well, he told me it was your problem. How did you? Well, I have to come out and look at. He well, said, no, that's township. Well, this, yeah. <laughs> yeah. The storm drainage is is uh, is really the response. Basically, runs with the road. He said, and the road is here, gone. But the county doesn't but have any money. Take care. Okay. You know, the, 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 the blessing that you have here in Glen Puddle doesn't last that long. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, I have my clothes but, but this. <laughs> but the answer to your question, this project is not addressing stormwater. Problem. How about when you put the pipe in, are you going to put that pipe down where it don't freeze? Yes, okay. absolutely. Yeah, I, I know there are two areas where I, I was wondering about. 
One is Sand Street. And there's one. Now, a lot of those lines that, that uh, go into the trailers on both sides are only under the pavement there, maybe a foot in some, in some place. And they, they freeze a lot over there. Those would have to be. Those all would come, no matter what they are, copper or any, whatever they are, right? Uh, they'd have to be put down first. Um, the other question I had was about. Um, Say the whole project's approved in, in all in the next three, four years, it's all completed. What about where the sewer goes up? Out there uh, towards the river. Lagoons? Yeah, the lagoons. Because I know oh, that the, Yeah, this project doesn't address the lagoons uh, in any way except that we will be putting less water in them because we're going to Well one of them's been there a long time. And that would be one of the areas that the uh, DEQ would get into, I would think. Well, we, we're working with them, this is going to be this project. We're working with DEQ to, uh, uh, they haven't cited the township yet. I don't think they will uh, in any foreseeable time. You know, but uh, we're taking samples of the groundwater out there and, and, and trying to get uh, permitted for a groundwater discharge, actually, that we're doing that. But uh, talking with Joel, he wants to set up a fund so that we can accumulate money in it to have the money to dredge out the first lagoon, but it doesn't need to be dredged out. They've got a 20-year life that's only been in there for 40 years. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's like a lot of other things. Well, there's a well. One of the wells is up that way, too. Uh, but, no, that's, that's up gradient. That's not... There's no, uh, no conflict between the, uh, e either the Kidder Shaft wells or the well in the tree. Well, up the gradient. The boons, you know, full right toward the river. So are all the streets in Gwynn going to be repaired, uh, repaved, or just the <coughs> dark line? The dark line. Just the dark line. Just, just yeah, so we're, like, like in here. Yes. Yeah. There, there are, like, uh, the Sunday streets aren't, aren't that old. We did them just a short while ago. Other ones, there's no water main down them, so we didn't have an excuse for them. But then their water, the, the pipes leading to those houses, that's okay? Well, they're, they're fed off on the other lines, basically. <coughs> you know, they, like, You're like telling us for, that the pipes are bad, and that those are okay? No, well, here... For example, there's no customers. Okay. See, there's no water main here. The, the houses all take the water off near this line okay. or this line. I see. Okay. But that middle line isn't dark. That was yes. done. Oh, okay. That's done. That's, that's done. Right. thirty-five. That's new pipe. That's only okay. four years old. Uh, the shutoff keys out in front of your house. Is that on your property or mine? So it's, is that going to be my cost or your cost? Well, the, the, the shut-off key is a project cost. It's in the project that's, cost. That's where the township line ends at that shut-off. Okay. From there to your house, whether it's 20 feet or 200 feet. Okay. Shut and up. now one thing we didn't mention here, but it, and it's a requirement of USDA, the duplex will have two services. You can't have... It, they, they want to be set up so if somebody doesn't pay your bill, you can shut them off and not cut somebody else's bill. Yes? Um, I'd like to address the water meters. How, how are they going to be wrecked? Uh, there'll be, there's a uh, radio transmitter on the meter that can be read from outside the house. You don't have to have a landline to read that meter? Okay, that's, is that, um, but Marquette is putting in new meters in because they have places that where you have to have a landline in order to read that meter? So they're replacing meters? I don't know about Marquette. Well, I, that's, 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 a, that's a different system. Okay. That's, there's, there's, there's several types of systems. You've got your old read system where, you know, Eric's got to go down to the basement to look at a water meter. That's, that's the, that's the Yugo water reading system. <laughs> okay. the, next, the, next, the next one is the remote on the side of the house with the numbers that tick off. That somebody's got to physically read those numbers and write them down. 
After that comes the same thing, but it's got a touch reader where they've got a little wand that looks like a cordless drill. They just walk up, touch it, it puts it into the computer, you bring it back to the office, you put it in the base station, and it dumps the water in the reading unit. The next, the next step up is a drive-by, which is they just drive a car down the street, they just get close enough, instead of touching it, it just sends a, the signals connect. The next one up, we're getting into Cadillacs now, or maybe Mercedes-Benz, is these, you know, completely passive, through the phone lines, you know, that's that's kind of a Cadillac system that we're putting in. We're looking at putting in a good quality Chevy system. <laughs> I'm a Chevy guy. So good quality, you know, a, a decent system that doesn't require a ton of labor, but it's certainly not extravagant by any stretch. No, so. this is the same system that we have in Palmer and also Tilton Township. Both have this same system. Which, it's which a, is which system? What? Which system is it? It's, it's the, basically it's, it's a, a wake up system when the, when the reading unit comes past, it sends a signal to the meter, the meter answers it, and comes back to what its current reading is. Kind of a drive. Yeah. Okay. It's basically that, a drive. Now is that battery operated? Is that, can you the, use the electricity from the house to run the thing? Or no, run? it is a battery, and the battery is 15 years old. Yeah. 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 Because I know, like in the high school, when they added all the new plumbing, they put in all the electronic stuff. There's no juice on it. Right. They have a battery, and it actually has a generator. Every time the water comes on, it recharges the battery. Some of the older ones are like that. This doesn't do that. Doesn't do that. Lithium ion battery. So once every 15 years, you might have to replace the battery. And a, a meter, normal, normal. Normally, you would want to maintain the meter around 15. Just to check, make sure it's calibrated, make sure it's working. Although these meters, we're proposing to have no moving parts on them. Right, it's all over. Basically, it's a magnetic filament. One other thing, real quick, you can probably answer this. Like Sand Street, I've lived here since 87. Patch it up once in a while, but I mean, the street has never been repaired. I mean, who, who, would we have to, the citizens on the street have to pay the street? I mean, does the county, does the township, when a road gets so screwed up, who, we play billings and well, I mean, billings, the billings have been done, Pierce has never been done either. And the one street they did one year, they, they, billings, billings, billings they did, but Pure Street, I mean, is like a, an obstacle course, you know. I mean, it's so patched up that, you know. I was just wondering if, if there's ever a schedule where they go through and say, hey, this year we're going to repave this street, or does the township pay for that, or does yeah. the county takes care of the roads, but they don't repay them? You know? they, they don't pay a portion. It used to be at one time 50 50, then it went 40 60. Uh, but now they say that we pay 100% of the blacktop, and they'll take their 40% and yeah. use, it, use it for the engineering. Yeah. There's not a whole lot of money reimbursed. The township has to pay for all the roads in Forsyth Township. And, and, and like you said, we put $150,000, it's a pretty good chunk of our budget. That doesn't cover but a mile, or a mile and a half. What I'm looking for, like in Swansea, since you talked about it, is when I talk to the County Road Commission, and I'm asking them, like, you see where they come in and they have grind? You know, they just do a grind and then put it right back down and put another layer on top. Rather than rebuilding the whole road, is it going to be less expensive for the township to go ahead and just put a grind and then put it down again with a, with a new surface on top? Because if you're in Swansea and various, I mean, if you got a Jeep like I do, every 50 feet you get a whiplash. <laughs> so I'm just saying, I, I, I know my brother always there and I drive that road to that I said, you know, I'd rather walk it than drive it. Right, right now it's the smoothest it's ever going to be it's because, be because the snow oh, ice snow. fills all the holes. But Pure Street is really good for that. And I was hoping that the water project was going to be the whole town, the Swansea's and all this way. Like I say, now I got all good roads in Gwynn, Swansea, and Princeton. Because of finance, we can't do it. But I was really hoping that I was going to go on. 
that'll take a lot of our headaches away from us because the roads are bad and just want to be infected with a track with a trigger. Yeah, we're really bad. It's like grinding and relaying works pretty well here because you've got real sandy soils. So right. Like you know, you see, in the road commission, supposed to maintain the roads, you know, like I said, that the water, you have a puddle there so deep, uh, as soon as you get frost underneath that pavement, it pushes it right up. So if you don't have good drainage on it, your, your roads aren't going to last off. Right in front of my house, let's see, let's see. to the west of it, we call it Lake Mini Poo Poo. Because it really gets bad. And, and then one, one year it froze up, we're really bad, so that somebody in the county commission said, get, that, get down to a grader and push all that ice away from the intersection and so on. By the time they got done in my home, in front of my house, push it all of Lake Mini Poo Poo into my yard, I had approximately, I figured out the number of yards, I had approximately 30 yards of ice in my driveway. I had literally parked my truck in front of the grader so he would not push more into my driveway. Of course, that upset him a little bit, but he, didn't, he wasn't the guy shoveling that ice out. He can't blow it. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing you mentioned was the USDA, uh, when a project like this is done, they come in and check it, say, once a year. While the project is being done, they come in and check. Um, <laughs> see, on a quarterly basis or something. Yeah. Um, what, uh, where yeah, the think, money is spent yeah, for this part. I'm going to run through the process, okay. kind of the process for everybody. You know, at, at this point, USDA has done what they call obligated funds. They've, they've sent the township a letter and said, we've reviewed the engineering, we've reviewed your application, we've reviewed your proposed budget, your water system budget, whatnot, and they've obligated funds to the township. So they've taken money off of some balance sheet in Washington somewhere and put Forest City right. Township's name on it. Okay, so that's now after the township's gone through a long vetting process and an application about way thick and things like that. Now, as, as the project will move forward, USDA is involved every step of the way. Um, from the, with plans getting, say the plans were finished for the job, they have to be sent to USDA for their state engineer to review. They have to have their Office of General Counsel review all the um, right easements, the uh, all the legals, all the different things that have to be done. They're, they're literally Chicago lawyers have to do it. Um, once the project goes to bid, of course, USDA requires the projects competitively bid. So there's an ad which would go out in the mining journal, say, and every, all the eligible contractors could bid on it. Once the job is bid, of course, uh, you've got to take the little bidder, USDA would use all the bidding documents, um, the contracts, everything else, signs off because it, it's not just the contractor and the township signing off on those documents. USDA has to sign every one of them too because they have to review them. When the money starts to move, now you come to what they call a loan closing. Now you've got USDA, the township, the engineers involved, the also bond council, which is Detroit attorneys in this case, but they, they're the ones that take care of all the bonding and all the bonding and treasury rules with the Michigan Department of Treasury in order for the count for those bonds to be pulled to do this job. Now as the project moves forward and pay requests come in, actually the township has to keep a running ledger. They don't just mail you a check for four point five million dollars. What you have to do is you have to get a pay request from the contractor. The inspector out in the field has to sign off that every foot of pipe went in the ground and everything else to write that documentation. That all goes to USDA as a funding as a draw request. So if you need $150,000, they review everything. Yep, it's all on the up and up. They send $150,000 to the township. They put that. It has to go into a special account, a, separate, a completely separate account. And then every penny, literally, I've been doing this for 15 years, and I've spent hours chasing 50 cents trying to find a balance sheet. So believe me, every penny that gets spent on this job gets has to go on that sheet. And at the end of the job, it has to show a zero balance or where every penny went on, on the project. And, and they divide the project costs. There's about uh, anywhere from 10 to 12 categories. Um, there's legal costs, there's three different types of engineering. What we do gets actually divided into three different costs. 
construction, they have what's called contingency because they're going to fund the project to a certain amount, say $4.5 million. Well, if after you bid and you add everything up and it comes to $4.4 million, there's $100,000 left over. That actually goes into a separate category which can cover, oh darn, we found this pipe was broken too, we need to fix this. Well, that's where a changeover comes from. I mean, we're not psychic. We don't know everything. Who keeps the ledger? The township? The, the township, the township, we have helped the township keep the ledger. Every month after there's a draw, the ledger has to go to USDA. We have to send it to them. They will not send you another penny until you send them last month's ledger. So that's, I mean, there's a, one thing I can say about USDA is they've got a lot of great checks and balances. I mean, car has been dealing with them for years. I've been dealing with them for years. Brian's dealt with them some. They're a pain in the butt to deal with. But I have to say, they are probably one of the best run federal programs I've seen because every, every I's got to be dotted, T's got to be crossed, and the guy we have to deal with is actually in a retired Marine. So he, he makes sure we're, we're flying high and tight and everything's done. So. And they insist that there's full time resident inspection. Work is being done in accordance with the special conditions. Now, you came up with this price of $4.9 million. Okay, if I, you're going to go off for bids, and I'm sure no one's going to bid $2.5 million to do this project, but let's say it was a million dollars less than that. A million dollars, are they still going to borrow $4.9 million no matter what? No. no. If, if it was that far off, I mean, if it was that, I mean, if, if the economy, something strange happened in the economy and, you know, the price of pipe went way down and some labor went way down and it was that much less, they'll do what they call a de-obligation. It's called a de-obligation. They would de-obligate a million dollars. So you would only borrow 3.5 million. Yeah, or, 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 we would look at where we could spend the million dollars. Or, you would look at doing with their work. approval. Okay. <coughs> well, the other thing is, how about if it goes beyond 4.5? Well, if it goes beyond four, well, <laughs> can you guys go back? I mean, it's 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 it's, it's, it's not a pleasant problem. It, it it happens on occasion. But you look at something you prioritize. Yes, we have to do. We should do all this work. You would look for okay. If I've only got a five pound bag and I have six pounds, which one of these pounds could I take out? And then and then look down the road. Um, you know, as far as the construction, that well, maybe you save money doing this, now you can put that back in. Well, my wife works in construction. She's an office manager. She talks about change orders. Yep. And a project that started out as a million dollars can be 1.2, 1.3 million by the time they're done. We change, you know, but I take it we're not going to be doing that. You well, kind of change orders, you know, adding to the cost of this. Well, and, but I guess people hear the word change order and they kind of hear it as a dirty word. Well, change order, I mean, there's there's change orders which can happen because something happened on the field that the engineer, the contractor, the township didn't know about. You know what? It's going to cost more money to do sure. Then there's another kind of change order that, hey, we got we have some money left where I talk about contingency money. Right. You know, we, we're getting to the end of the job. Everything's been going according to plan. We'd like to do this too. And once you've got a contractor, established unit prices, and a contract, you know, we're going to do a change order and have the contractor do some additional work. Again, now, like in this case, some, I've been asked a question before, well, can we fix the sewer line on Elm Street with that money on a water project? No, it's got to be in the water system. You know, you can't repave um, Sand Street or, or something like that. <laughs> it's got to be water project related. So, so it's, you know, change order isn't necessarily a dirty word. And actually also, in the course of construction, another thing to realize too with change orders is we want you have to pay for what they did. We can say you need to put 700 feet of pipe down that street. Well, we're paying them by the foot. Well, it actually took 708 feet of pipe, or say 692 feet of pipe. Well, whether it's 692 or 708, it's going to require a change order to properly pay that contractor for what got built. 
So not all of it's just extras per se. It's 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 just making sure that what's paid for is 100% accurate to what was built. Yes, sir. These meters, they're going to have a dual readout, so you can check. It can be read manually. Yes. I mean, you'll be able to check against the meter. It's got to have some way to check it. Yeah, it's got numbers on the, on the head just like any other water meter. And then, you know, and it actually, I think you're supposed to check them with whatever meter, just to, just to do a comparative read. So you can compare it with, with what the college is coming with electronics is coming Just like you can your lever meter. Do that religiously every time. Yeah, if you get your, yeah, if you're looking at your meter and you use 3,800 and you get billed for 6,000, yep. you might want to have somebody come and check. Well, the electricity is like that. It's every other month and then it's a, an estimated sometimes. Yeah, it's close to 6,400 dollars. An estimated one, and you did. I call them up every month and do, the, do all the readings and they send me an estimated bill. I don't pay it. I pay it. But what I, you know, I mean, I really got in. I don't know what they were doing in my meter. <laughs> Hi. In regard to the competitive bids that you mentioned, uh, how long is uh, Foresight Township going to post those jobs before the bids are actually uh, come in? Well, nor is that normally, a thirty day? Normally, you know, I mean, words up for us on the street, but usually a formal bid ad would go in what they call it. Newspaper, local, or general circulation in the area, which in this area would be the mining journal. So usually, what we'll do is, is it's usually a month. It's it's 60 or I'm sorry, 30 days that you need to post four weeks. They call it that it needs to be posted. So say say if you're on April 2nd, the ad went the paper. Those bids aren't going to be due until May 2nd. Type of thing. So it's going to be a full month that it's out there and. And given the construction industry, um, most contractors, they get um, cons um, Dodge reports, Construction News Daily, those people are constantly calling us because they, they hear about this stuff and they actually, so it ends up in these construction journals advertised too, but according to the rules, we have to publish it locally for a month. Can you take someone that's not locally then oh, yeah. hire them to stay? Yeah, I mean, it, no, that well, but bit. they have, to, it's got to be a little bitter. I mean, that's, that's, that's the thing. The, well, the lowest responsible bid, which I could go into a two-hour diatribe about lowest responsible bidder, but I'm not going to, but basically it comes down to low bid unless there's, unless this person, unless there's something really wrong with that bid, you know, like someone mentioned, somebody bid $2.5 million, Sorry, you missed something. You know, it's going to be nothing about heartache and sorrow. We're going to go to the next step. So, but the local so companies that first did that, or it's 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 open and free competition. So if somebody thought they could come from Colorado and build this job cheaper than someone who lives around here, they're they're welcome to it. But you know, your local contractors generally have the advantage because their guys go home to their house every night and they're not paying hotels and large mobilization fees, and they know their area. The Princeton system was built on the Wisconsin country. It, it does happen, but there's, you know, you want first dibs, um, you know, I guess you want upper hand, local contractors definitely have the upper hand, but based on maximum open and free competition is what they call it. Anybody who can get bonded for it, you know, you have to have the ability to get a performance bond and bid bond and things like that. Anybody can get bonded for it, put bid on it. That's, that's part, of, part of the funding package is you know, the free market. But like I said, local contractors generally have the advantage just because they're not paying for hotel rooms and trucking and equipment half the crop, half the over two states. Is this price that you're getting
Well, actually, we're paying for your meters through the law. Through the through the law. law. Through your law. You can't get sure. something for because originally, when one of the other township supervisors, they were going to charge everybody in town 600 bucks each right. and put a meter in, mm -hmm. and it, they may cost that much, but we're just paying for it in a different way. This is well over 40 years. Of right, and versus writing a check on and the, and the purchasing power of other rules. Right. right. Well, that's the good yeah. We went through all this once before. And somebody went around the position. It's out on the back. Is this going to happen again? It can. It could. It can. Okay. So there's a time limit between now and when Google it is. We'll publish an advertisement in the mighty. Okay. And that starts the clock running on the petition. Okay. So it's going to be kind of like the same, 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 same kind of thing. Yeah, yeah one, one reason the township wanted to have this meeting is to make sure that, you know, because they, they do, like, they kind of, they kind of come in wrong robin here, but they did recognize that, I mean, they've got a responsibility, they've got an opportunity here. So they looked at bringing this thing back to kind of the bootstraps up sort of thing. And that's why they're having these three meetings, is to make sure that the right information gets out there that um, that hopefully it will be supported, or at least not opposed. Well, part of the, the feedback we got is, well, if I'd known that's what it was, I wouldn't have signed it. Well, I did sign it, and that's what it was. And then other people have said, you know, since they saw what we reduced the project by, it's okay, now it makes sense. It's just unfortunate that's the way the Michigan, the, the statutory treasury law number, whatever works, but it's you know, the electors of the township, even though this is technically this project started this summer. If it's well, it would it's, it would take a while. It would it would definitely be bid out this summer and probably started this summer until winter came back and then for a winter hiatus and then we finished the 20 days. It normally takes USDA 60 days or so to just review the paperwork process after we've taken the bids. Four days. So this would be a couple of summers. Oh, yeah. As far as the expense to the home, the total home, it be million. The only additional expense that I have is right is in case you need to replace pipe going from the shut off valve to the repair pipe to your shut off valve uh, to the meter. Right. That would be the only additional expense to the home. Potential expense, yeah. Potential. And the, the meter's covered and the rest is covered under the four point nine. Correct. So we've got to put it, you know, when you put it in meter, you put it in what they call a meter go for a meter horn. And there's some uh, piping modifications that need to be done to the house plumbing to do that. Can be the No, that's no. normally including the project. No. We've got to replumb your whole house. That's, that's no. different. No. From, the meter on, <laughs> from the meter to the shutoff valve right. would be the homeowner's expense. Yeah, well, from, from the point where they're going to put that meter horn. You know, I mean, not to, the, I just, I don't want to get too much hair splitting here, but you know, you have the line that runs from the shutoff into your house. There's a point where they're going to cut your pipe and put that horn on. From the point they cut that pipe back, it's, is, is the homeowner's responsibility. And from the point where they tie it back in. So if it's good. If it's good, you're very so good. Yep. Otherwise, that would be an additional case. Right. No. What we what was done in, in Palmer is uh, the homeowners that needed to replace the line worked with the contractor and got a price from him to do it. Some of them did, some of them did. Palmer, it's a cousin or whatever, they did it. It's a ton of them. The contractor in general didn't pretty good price, so maybe the contractor or somebody has to work with Just one quick question. If you have to replace that line, say from your shutoff at your property line into your, is that a permitted? You have to have permit to do that. It has to be a licensed plumber. It has to be a licensed contract. plumber. But there's not a permit per se. I don't know that the township has an actual permit process for that. Joe, do you know? Would the, would the county, do the county, the township doesn't, but would the county request a permit 
if I had to replace my water line right now? No. Outside your house, no. Okay. If you're plumbing inside the house, then you get into some. That answers your question, doesn't it? No. Since, I can't catch well, what you said. If, if I had to replace my line right now, would I have to get a permit? He okay. says no. Okay. So it wouldn't make any difference then if it did came at the time when the water project was going in or not, because they do require a permit. The county does for inter for interior mechanical permit or something like this here. Yeah. But outside, uh, that means that outside you could uh, do your trench and have it. Do it yourself. Yeah. If you wanted to. I mean, you I mean, could do it do the hookup. No, but you could do it yourself. Do your own trench. You could hook up your house or whatever. That's what I'm getting at. You could do it yourself if you want. It just, has to be, it just has to have a plumber sign off on it, basically. You know, the other thing I was going to mention is when they first put this out, I think, you know, I'll be honest with you, I'm not sure which way I voted on it, but if I knew they were going to replace the street, I probably would have voted. If I did vote for it, I definitely would have voted for it. And I don't think that was real clear because I have a feeling a lot of people on Sand Street, and Superior Street, and some of these other streets that aren't going to get touched. We're under the impression. Right. They, I don't think they knew that all the streets were going to be replaced, which is what would have happened, right? Well, it still won't happen, though. The sand, the sand, no, no, I realize that, but if, under the old one, you were going to run New Mainstown. Oh, you are. Okay, so either it is or it wouldn't have we were going to run a 553, but not through Sands. We weren't going to replace any 553. I see. One of the comments I heard is that we didn't like it because we were, the users were going to pay for that stretch, one up 35 and up 553. And he felt that whoever develops that should pay for that. So some of those people that voted no uh, expressed that, you know, that was, well, why should we pay for that stretch when the commercial person is going to come up and make money on it? So maybe a little bit better for us now by taking that out of there, those people will say, okay, they have to pay for it just like we did in the beginning. Mm -hmm. and, and other than that, that one loop that they, you said you have to go and do, that's, that's something that you, you have no choice. You do the project, you have that's to That's for existing customers. Well, the other side of that, which we're discussing, is if, let's say, I doubt it, but 20 houses were built out there, all those people would be connected to the water system. They would. Yes, they'd be using water, but they'd also be contributing to the fund. So you'd be adding people to the wall. And every customer who added the system benefits. Right, benefits the system. So I mean, I guess there's pros and cons. If you do the big box store or something, is going to move in there. Even that would be even better. Maybe they'd be able to go and say, okay, fine, I'm going to do that. But not knowing. Okay, any other comments? Any other questions? Yeah. 
and, and they, they were they were searching, they had been searching on their own up until today. And then we were um, we worked with them and the DEQ and we were gonna get involved tomorrow morning, but they did find one leak, they think they have one more. So I got one of our engineers working with them to figure out the okay, no, it could be over here, so we put this, 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 and this and try it. Then we're gonna open that up and try it. So they, they did find they did find a leak. I think the contract the contract was on its way to some fix it. I call it in a giggle when you talk here. We will have bells on the Thank you.